Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I have a walk-in cooler that's temping high. You can see we're about 46 degrees. So let's do our visual checks inside. Both fans are running. No ice on the coil, which is always nice to see. And now let's just make sure we're getting a call for cooling. Let me see if I can get my camera in here. So there you go. Uh, we do have power at the solenoid. So we're all good there. So now uh, we're gonna go jump up on the roof. I uh, can't stress the importance of doing all these checks in the box. As you can see here, I have a, I have a far uh, walk. It's, it's three floors up. So you really wanna make sure you do your checks. So check your fans, check if your ice up. Make sure we have a call for cooling. Cause this can get pretty exhausting going up and down, up and down. And we wanna work efficiently. All right, so let's do our checks up on the roof. Sight glass is clear, that's good. And condenser fan is running. All right, so let's go draw this out really quickly. So um, condenser fan was running. Compressor, I did not hear it running. So what is that telling us? Okay, so based on studying the schematic now, I didn't have to pull a schematic out. I work on a lot of these, but these visual cues that I keep talking about are really important for mapping the schematic and making you be able to troubleshoot very efficiently. So if our condenser fan's running, let's just map that out. So let's come through here. We know there's power at the condenser fan. How do we know? It's running. So that's telling me we have power here. And let's go to our L2 side. Sorry, just drawing this super quickly. Okay, so that's so if we have power out of the contactor, what does that mean? It means we have power obviously coming in. So this is all good right here. Okay? And if our contactor is closing, what does that mean about our contactor coil? Well, it's got to be energized, right? So that means we can literally come here and draw out this entire circuit here. So that means our fuse is good there. Okay, and then on our other side, it means uh, we don't have an oil pressure switch. We don't have a time delay. We do have a low pressure switch that tells us it is closed. And it tells us this fuse is good. So based on us just looking at that fan, that condenser fan running, uh, we've basically mapped out the entire circuit. So all that's really left now is we potentially have a broken wire here at the compressor. It's, it's possible. Um, or we have an issue with the start components or we have a bad compressor. Okay, so it's really important to look for these visual cues. They help you map out the entire schematic really quickly. In this case, I know this schematic really well. So I know if the condenser fan is getting power and it's running, um, the compressor should be getting power as well. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up. Let's check our amp draw, see what's going on. So we're getting 30 amps. Yeah, that's no good. We're going to go off on overload here. So let's just confirm proper voltage. We do have 208 at the compressor. That's good news. All right, so as you can see there, we had 208 at our compressor. So we can kind of just draw this like that. Okay, so we have 208 here at the compressor. So what does that mean? Either our compressor is bad or our start components. Uh, in this case, uh, I couldn't get the start components. Um, it was probably like after five o'clock when I was doing the service call. So uh, I'm gonna throw a super boost in, which is gonna replace all three of these components. Okay, and then hopefully the super boost can get it going. And if it does, um, that means the compressor's still good. And we just need to get uh, replace the OEM start components. And if it doesn't get it going, well, we need a compressor. All right, so moment of truth here. We got our super boost hooked in. We hooked it in parallel with our run cap. And let's fire up, fingers crossed. Let's see if we can save this compressor. 18 amps down to six amps, beautiful. She's running, so that means the compressor's still good. Start components are bad. All right, and just really quickly here, how we wire this in. So let's call this our super boost here. We are literally just going to run it in parallel with our run cap. One lead here. We're just going to piggyback right there. And that's how you wire in your super boost for this type of setup. And then make sure your 
sizing your super boost correctly so in this case i used uh the super boost 8e which is good for one to five horsepower and it was within my range of micro farads um for the start cap all right so changed all these start components here let's fire up see what happens and we're getting 6.8 amps that's really good compressors running uh, we don't need a new compressor which is uh kind of a relief right now because we're so busy at work so I'm, I'm i was thankful for that okay last thing we want to do is let's gauge up sight glass is clear and we're getting 55 and 231 um let's go see what we should be getting all right so as you can see on our suction side we had 55 psi and then more importantly if you looked at the uh saturation temperature is 19 fahrenheit so what i'm looking for because i have a TXV, uh, I'm looking for current box temp minus our EVAP TD or superheat. In this case, we're aiming for 10. So in this case, if we have our current box temp, let's just call it 35. It's a little bit higher than that. And then let's subtract our 10 Fahrenheit. And that gives us 25 Fahrenheit. So if we go look up 25 Fahrenheit on our PT chart here, and that gives us 62 psi and then let's go look up our head pressure so that's really easy we just take our ambient and we're going to add our condenser split in this case our condenser splits 30 so we're 70 fahrenheit plus 30 fahrenheit which would give us 100 fahrenheit and 100 fahrenheit is going to give us 236 psi and that gives us 236 psi so let's go over to our refrigeration cycle chart plug in our values and see what's going on all right so we're getting 55 psi we're looking for 62 on our suction side and then our head pressure we're getting 230 and 236 so what's that telling us it's telling me my pressure here is a little bit low. My head pressure is within the range. Um, if I drop this down from 70 to 69 Fahrenheit ambient, it'll actually make it the right number. So this one here, I'm not concerned about. Our pressure is low here. Okay, sight glass is full. So what's that telling me? It's just telling me our superheat has to be adjusted. Okay, so let's go adjust our superheat and go from there. All right, so as you can see here, 38 box temp. And saturation temperature 23 so that's going to give us a superheat of around 15 so we can calculate this even without putting our gauges on but we want to do that to be accurate so I'm gonna go four quarter turns I want to open the valve why do I want to open the valve I want to bump up my saturation temperature it was 23 I need it to be a little bit higher okay so we're gonna see here 23 it's gonna start going up nice and slowly there you can see it right there 24 and as that comes up and we subtract that versus the box temp you can see our superheats dropping okay so opening the valve is going to drop our superheat in this case and you can see it's gone up to 25 so we have 37 box temp minus 25 now this is a rough calculation we obviously want to use the clamps and that's putting us around 11 and in this case it's saying 10 so let's let this let this stabilize we'll come back and we're still at 10 i'm going to adjust this two more quarter turns i want to get 8 to 10 superheat so we're just above 10 we're at 10.2 i just want to be a touch lower than that so we open the valve and you can see we're at 23.8 saturation it's going to bump it up nice and slowly and look at our superheat she's dropping really nicely look how responsive this valve is okay you don't want to rush this process you want to take your time so every time i make an adjustment i'll wait a couple minutes five minutes whatever it is you can see now 36 box temp and or 35 box temp, 25 saturation look at our superheat 8.5 okay so i want to be between 8 and 10 superheat and it's actually going to come up a little bit um, as we let it um, let the valve sit there so we're gonna let the valve sit so here's my final superheat 9.7 fahrenheit superheat i'm very happy with that box temp is dropping down to 35 it's running very good this box we've tweaked it 
Um, now the unit is running very efficiently. It's cooling down quicker than it was before. Uh, I'm happy with these figures and we're all good here.